guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Jeanette from Woody Quest Sewing Crafts. I'm gonna be doing golf towels today. So I'm gonna show you guys how I actually do the towels. Um, I usually get my golf towels from Amazon. I get these micro, um, microfiber uh, towels, the green ones. These are really, really good. A lot of people like these. Um, a lot of a lot of folks like them because they're not good. I can't even talk today because they're not long. They're not like super long or anything like that. And they come with a clip, which is really, really, really nice. Okay, so I got a customer that put an order in for it, and I'm going to embroider this for her son. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the clip because it does make it a lot easier for me to go ahead and 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 embroider on it. Before I actually do embroider on it, I always like to. So my uh, tag on here, always tag tag your stuff. So let's go over here to the sewing machine. Ooh, I'm gonna go a little slow because someone did leave a comment about getting dizzy when I move the camera around. And I totally understand it. I, you know, I'm like, thank you so much for writing that because you know, I didn't even think about that at the time. You know, that people could be getting dizzy while I'm moving this camera around. Cause I only have, I use my iPhone. I don't have like all these fancy cameras. Um, I just like to keep things simple, you know, simple person. So I'm going to sew my tag on here. I get these little tags. I get them off of Amazon. I buy them by the bulk because I do have a lot of Etsy orders. I do a lot of kitchen towels, dinner napkins, all that kind of stuff. So I always like to tag all the stuff that I work on and that I sell because what happens is when people say, hey, where did you get that? And I love my knee lifter. My knee lifter is like, oh. At first, I kind of thought it was like the ugliest thing to have on the side of the sewing machine. But now it's like I love sewing with my knee lifter. Because while you have your hands doing your thing, you can use this to actually lift up and down the presser foot. So I really, really love that. So if you guys you just got your machine and you're not using your knee lifter, I'm telling you, play with it. It's gonna. It takes a little while to get used to it because if you haven't been using it, it you know it, it takes a little while to get there. But um, yeah, once you start using the knee lifter, it's like your new best friend. You love that thing. So I'll be chatting with you while um, I'm working on this golf towel for a customer. All right, so there you go. All right, so. I am a neat crafter, as I tell people, you know, that's why uh, my girlfriends, sometimes they, they don't like to craft with me because I like to clean as I go. <laughs> that's just how I am. Anyway, look how cute. All right, see? This is what I'm talking about. All right, hope you guys can see it. Let me make sure. Okay. See? So it has my shop name on it and stuff like that. Because, and there's a reason why to do this, okay? When you when somebody buys your item off of Etsy, th what's going to happen is people are going to say, oh, where'd you get that, Etsy? They don't know the name of the shop because Etsy's, you know, is, is really about a platform with different little shop owners. So you want people to remember you. So this is a really, really cool idea. All right, so how do I do my golf towels? I use tearaway stabilizer, okay? Now for this golf towel, I am going to change the bobbin thread. And I'm also going to change, um, no, I won't. I won't. I was going to put black tearaway stabilizer, but I'm not. I will use a um, black bobbin thread, though. I'm going to change the bobbin thread to my, um, to my machine. Because that way it just looks better. Okay? So I'm going to use my white stabilizer. And I do put black cloud cover in the back of this also. All right, so this is very, very easy. It's the same way like the dinner napkin. Of course, you're going to have the, the, the little hole facing up, okay? Um, and I could tell right away they put this wrong, but that's all right. You don't, nobody cares about that. You want to make sure that your tag is at the bottom, Okay. So what I usually do is I position this just like I do my dinner napkins. Okay, I just make sure it's well aligned. I smooth it out. I take my time hooping. 
So rush, um, just like I say with everything, if you rush during the hooping process, most likely you're, you're not going to be happy with the end result because this is really the most important step. If you don't have it hooped correctly, you're, you're kind of messed up, you know? <laughs> you already messed up in the process. All right, so I have all this. This is fine. Now I'm going to put the top of my hoop on here. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and smooth, and it is. It's a nice, tight, smug, snug, not smug, snug. Always cleaning as I, as I um, in water. Now I do water soluble topping right on top, and on the design I always do a basting stitch. Okay, the machine does the basting stitch for me. So um, I'm hoping that you guys can see everything that I am doing. Okay, trying not to move the camera a little bit too much so that way you guys can kind of like, you know, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing so you guys can learn. That's the, um, because I live in a golfing community, so a lot of folks around here golf, and, um, yeah, golfing towels are a big, big thing. I'm not a golfer, so, you know, I don't. I don't know about, you know, how they use the golf towels. I think they use it to clean the, the clubs. I'm not, I, I don't know. <laughs> I never really wash clubs. I'm, I'm just, I mean, golfing, I've never been a, uh, you know, I never played it, actually. I played miniature golf, but that's about it. That's as far as it went and stuff. And after that, nobody wanted to play with me because I was cheating. You know, just pushing the ball when nobody was looking, you know. Pissed off people. All right, so I'm going to take this over to the machine. Okay, and I'm going to be twirling you guys, all right, so you may want to close your eyes, but I'm going to go a little slow, all right, so that way you guys can see, because I have the machine right behind my, uh, my cutting board, okay, so, all right, I think I'm going to have to, nope, it's fine, I thought I was going to have to adjust the hoop, I didn't know if I had 8 by 13 before, this is the 8 by 9 hoop, mighty hoop. I love my mighty hoops. Um, okay, I want to make sure that it's nice on the machine. Nothing's taut or anything. You don't want any snagging or anything like that. This is good. I got my heat press. Well, I'll leave my heat press on. Um, let's see. I believe I am getting my... In here, out right here, okay? I'm moving you a little slow and stuff. Right here, oops, this is not good, okay. Let me try to uh, bring this down here, all right, cool. Um, okay, so at right here, I just wanna show you guys real quick. Um, you know, I have my design, so whatever design you're gonna have, this is the one I'm going to use. I'm actually going to save it on the USB, and let's see, oh, it's there, it's there already. Okay, so I'm gonna cancel that. So this is the design that I'm actually gonna put on the kitchen the kitchen towel i was gonna say kitchen towel. okay golf towel okay so i'm taking this out okay and let's go over back to the machine and i'm gonna have to make some adjustments to the threads i believe because i think i had a kitchen towel that i was working on before see um yeah and this is not you know so i'm gonna edit that i'm gonna delete that Okay, so I'm going to go back to here, and this is what I want to do. I'm going to set that. I need to rotate it. I'm rotating it this way. Okay, and then I'm going to hit end edit. Um, I am going to want a basting stitch around it, so that way it can keep the um, water soluble intact. So I do edit the basting stitch, because I don't need it to be so big. So what I do is, hold on. Ah, sorry, return. Okay, size, and then you see how the basting stitch, I don't know if you guys see it, you don't, it's too, let me put you guys closer. Okay, so this is the basting stitch right here, okay? I'm going to go back, all right, so that you guys can see how I did it, in case you guys have this machine and you don't know how to add the basting stitch, all right? So I'm going to just um, take out the whole thing, okay? Now, I hit right here, and that's for the USB, and then I'm going to select 
the design that I want, okay? And I'm gonna hit set. Now, as you can see, I don't want it to embroider this way. I wanna turn it, so I'm gonna rotate it. So I'm gonna hit rotate, and I'm gonna hit this button right here, which is 90 degrees, okay? All right, so I'm hitting that right here. And then as you can see, it turned over, okay? Now, you see you only have four dots over here. So that means that the four dots is just the design alone, okay? Now, um, I'm gonna hit okay. And then what I want to do is I'm gonna hit end edit. And then, oh, sorry, end edit. And then when I hit end edit, what happens, there you go, is now I wanna add the basting stitch. Now the basting stitch is what's gonna hold the water soluble stabilizer um, in place, right? On top of the, the uh, golf towel. So I'm just, I'm gonna click this right here. You see a little flower right here, it has that. You're gonna click that. And then right away, you're gonna see like there's this square. All right, now this square is kind of like big, which is okay, but sometimes I like to make it smaller because it stays a little bit on the stitches and I really don't need it all that big. So I hit edit and then I hit size. Now when you hit size and edit, you're gonna notice you don't just have four dots, you have a whole bunch of dots, right? You have the four dots and then you have a dot in between each of these. So what I'll do is I will click on this button right here, which is the arrows that are facing inward. And then that is going to shrink it. There you go. And that's a pretty good size. And I, I'm happy with that. I'm okay with that. Okay, then I hit and edit and then I'm gonna hit embroider. And then I have to change my threads, okay? So, um, Let's see, I know I'm gonna to have to have a green and I'm gonna to have to have a white. So I have to change the three and the four. So I'm going to grab white thread and I believe I need the 507 for the green. I do, and that's right here. And I need to change the thread colors for, for what? For three and four, right? So I'm gonna go and let's see. So make sure you guys can see. So I'm gonna change the thread colors for the three and the four. Um, three has to be white, which doesn't really have to. You can always change them out and stuff like that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so let's change the colors. These are fun to do. I kind of like the golf towels and stuff. Um, pretty easy, simple. Um, they are fun. People love them. Um, they make great gifts too. You know, Christmas is around the corner. You know, everybody loves personalized gifts. I mean, that's just like a really big thing. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, so I'm gonna. This one thing too that I did. I had my husband lower my machine on the stand. Okay. And I will tell you, I kind of regret doing that because now whenever I change my threads, even though now it's easier for me to get to here, because I'm 411, right? So even though I can easily get now to these threads and I don't have to like stretch up like that, when it comes to this part, I have to actually get the chair, sit down, and you know, do this. And so if I have a needle, uh um you know, if I have to change needles or if I get a thread break or something like that, I gotta like go down and it's kind of like, oh, it's just a little pain. So, but that's all right. I mean, it is what it is, you know? Um, I know he's gonna hate me, but cause, um, well, he won't hate me. I mean, you know, it's hard, harsh. He'll be fine with it, you know? But the thing is, I know I'll probably ask him to lift it back up. But I did tell him, I said, let's leave the machine in this height for at least like a week or two. See if I get accustomed to it. Because it could be that maybe I'm just not used to the machine being low. Because I've seen people have the machines on like different types of tables that are different heights. So I figured, let me see. Maybe it's just me getting used to it or something, you know. So I'm like, yeah, we'll see. All right, so that looks pretty good. It looks pretty solid. I already changed the colors. Um, it's not a lot of colors to it and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to start the machine. Um, and I'll play a little, you know, I will fast forward this in the video. This is what the design looks like. Pretty cool, right? 
And I will fast forward in the video and stuff because I know you guys aren't going to want to like sit there and watch this whole entire stitch out one by one. So I'll put some music on and stuff like that. And then we will resume when it's all done. Okay, so I'm going to start stitching right now. to the black but that's okay because I'm going to be putting some black cloud cover over this so you're not going to see any of this stuff so I'll show you what I'm going to do um that I'm going to be twirling you around again just little you know heads up okay and I'm gonna um have to move you guys up a little bit here so you guys can see exactly and I have you guys kind of like plugged in okay because the battery was running a little low on the phone so um, I'm going to go over here 
All right, so as usual, I'm gonna take this right out of the hoop. I always put the hoop back here because I'm always, um, this is the, the hoop that I use most often, which is my um, my eight by nine. I use that a lot. I use that for the towels and everything like that. So this is the cloud cover and yep, I cut it in the right place. Um, what this is, is the same thing as Tender Touch, but this is, um, it's called Cloud Cover because it's very hard to get the Tender Touch in the color black. I really kind of wish sometimes these, these um, came in different colors. So the Cloud Cover I get in the black and I usually buy them in the roll, okay? And they, they come in pretty big rolls. So I get a couple of these and these are really good. I use these whenever I have towels that are dark Okay, and I want to cover the black. Even like the black dinner napkins, I'll use this on that. So, um, as always, I'm going to cut my basting stitch first, okay? And I usually do the, you know, just go around. Don't pierce into your fabric because you don't want to like break your, you know, your, or damage the towel or anything like that. You're just kind of like sliding it across and, and you don't want to pierce any of your other stitches. You just want your basting stitch, okay? So I just go around. Um, sometimes I do every stitch, every other stitch. It's just to loosen them up, that's all. Okay. And then here where the actual basting stitch starts, I kind of always like lift it and I kind of cut the stitch a little bit. Okay, just leave that out. And you guys, you guys know I'm probably, I'm pretty neat. I'm the neat crafter. Okay, so, you know, I like my workspaces to always stay nice and neat. Okay, so. I hear Melo crying over there in the other room because he wants to play, he wants company. And I'll just put that in here for now. And then I'll put it in the garbage can later. And I always try to peel off as much as the paper as I possibly can. You don't have to do the whole thing if you don't want to, but I always do. I always try, you know, I don't do the whole thing. I just peel off as much as I possibly can because when I put this on top, you're not even going to see it. Okay, so. There you go. So that's pretty much take from the Y. Yes, Mellow. I hear my, my golden doodle, uh, Come here, Papa. Likes attention. I'm gonna have to take him for a walk today for sure. And I'm gonna take it out of the end to, you know, just to make it a little easier. I'm a little slow, I know, because I, I just love doing this stuff. I like to take my time and I actually like to enjoy what I do, so. <laughs> I guess I'm a little different from a lot of people. Some people like to rush through their stuff, and I don't. Now, I usually like to lift this. Now, you can take uh, a spray if you want, some water, and you can spray in the back, and then this will lift. As a matter of fact, I will do that. That is a trick that I learned from uh, a lady that she's kind of like, she doesn't even know it, but she's like my mentor. I love watching her. Um, she has her own embroidery business and she's been doing it for over 20 years. So she always has like the newest tricks. So, uh, as you can see, I was able to get it all out except for like right here. It's a little hard because, you know, you have all of the little nooks in there. So you can just peel, peel, peel. But if you take water and you just spray and you damp it, okay, this is water. And then I'm just spraying right here. That's all I'm doing. And then you let it sit for a little bit, okay? You let it sit for a little bit and stuff. And then what's gonna happen is this is really going to like, it's, it's just, you just peel it right off. It just peels right off. I'm just gonna wait a little bit um, so that the water can just sink in, okay? And then, when you go to peel it, look how easy. It's so much easier. All of it comes off, all of it, because it's like, it's it's wet. So, yes, Papa. Okay, 
Well, my golden ticket is very he, cheap. She, he is so upset. Yeah, so far, y'all. But see how easy? Got it all out already. Got it all out. Now, the only thing about this, though, I mean, even though it works fantastic, and I, and I think it's a great, great tip, you have to wait for it now to dry, right? So a lot of times what I like to do is I um, try to take it to a blow dryer to just rush the drying process because you don't want to put this in your in the heat press wet because that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in the heat press so that I can now cover the whole thing, see? So what I do is I take the cloud cover. Now this, you know, you don't have to put it if you don't want to. I do because I just think that it gives it a much neater appearance. You know, if you cover everything, it looks a little better. Um, so I always like cut it really nice and neat. And here he is, he wants to do his little cameo. What is it, Bubba? You wanna say hi? You wanna say hi to everybody? Oh, no, my poor mellow. Okay, boo boo. Yes, I know. So um, I always do it like this, and then I just put the cloud cover on top, and then I just heat press it, and then um, package it up, and then it's good to go. But before I do that, because this is still a little damp, I don't want to put it in the heat press this way, okay, because that's not good for the stitches and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to let it, um, you know, just dry. You know, I'll let it air dry. I'm not going to force it dry and stuff. So I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit and then I'm just going to let it air dry and then when it feels nice and dry then I will go ahead and I'll heat press it. Okay guys, didn't take long for it to uh, to dry. So now that it's nice and dry, right, because you don't want to put it in here wet or anything like that. I'm going ahead and I'm going to press the cloud cover on top of this. I think I just feel like it gives it a a better look it protects the stitches in the back and you know it can be kind of unattractive in the back so the black i wish i had it in gray if i had it in gray i would do it in gray but these are very hard to come by in different colors which is it's okay so do the best you can what you got right so okay so i have this now what i'm going to do i always smooth it out because i want to make sure that it, it looks nice and neat you don't just want to throw something on top of that. You know what I'm saying? You always wanna make sure your stuff looks really nice. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my Teflon sheet on it. And heat, press it down and stuff. Um, you could do it for less, but I always do 25 seconds at 325. Really for most, almost everything that I do, I use the same thing, so. But it works. I mean, I haven't had any issues yet. You know, well, yeah. This used to work okay, so. All right, done. All right, I think we're gonna need a new heat press soon. Okay, so, got it all done. See, it's really nice and neat right on it, okay? And I really like the way it kind of um, presses the embroidery too. It looks really, really nice. So I'm gonna go back to the um, cutting table, guys. I know I just walked right into your camera and stuff. Okay, oops, sorry. Um, no cameraman, I don't have cameraman. I don't have fancy stuff, just me and a phone. Me and an iPhone. So as you can see, it came out really, really nice. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can um, get you closer, sorry, so that you guys can see what the towel looks like. Really cool. Okay, I know they're gonna like it. And um, to package it, I just fold it. Um, make sure though, if you have a golf towel that has the hook, you put the hook back on, okay? This customer needs a hook because they do um, put this on their, um, I think the caddy, I think they call it a caddy, the thing that holds the golf I don't know. I'm not a golfer. And then what I do is I just fold it up really nice for them. Um, you know, where I can show the embroidery work. Right here. There you go. And the customer's invoice and stuff. And I'm just going to put this on here. 
in the bag. Did I put it the wrong way? Yep. And you put it in here. Put it nicely in here. And invoice, I add the invoice. Um, I always um, put a little advertisement on my YouTube channel just in case they want to, you know, check out how I do my stuff. Um, I always put a little card on how to take care of your embroidery items. Very important. You know, customers don't know. Don't always assume that people know how to take care of stuff. I put my business card just in case. And a little thank you, um, you know, for, for buying my product, you know, with their, their name on it and stuff. Then I just uh, fold this up. And then I put this in the garbage. Okay. And then I like to always put like a little sticker um, in the back. You know, saying thank you for shopping my small business. And then I'll put it in a little bag. I usually have like these little... Um, here, I have like, you can buy these, a lot of them. These are just mostly for local orders, and this is a local order. So I have like a little thank you bag. And, um, this is how you do it. Okay, so you just put it in the bag and stuff, and now I'm ready to tell the customer, come pick up their item. Okay, so guys, Hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up, and have fun making those golf towels. Talk to you later. Bye.